Code on Time App Generator allows you to easily assemble your CRUD web applications. The model builder provides a starting point for composing controllers, views, and pages. Let's start building our app based on the Northwind sample database. First, we'll want to initialize the connection to our database. We can create data models from our database entities, which include tables and views. Let's start with a model for products. By default, the model builder will include all fields in the table or view. It will also automatically traverse foreign keys, up to three levels by default, and will include the first required string field. The first field found in this traversal will be automatically configured as the alias of the lookup. That is, the text displayed to the user instead of the ID. Let's go ahead and sort products by name. Without creating any other models, let's generate the app and see what we get with minimal configuration. You can see that we have one page generated based off our database entity called products. This page gives us a baseline set of features including sorting, filtering, selecting, and editing. as well as deleting. The single products model gives the application a definition on how to query products records as well as join relevant information, such as the supplier company name and the category name. However, notice that when attempting to change the value for those lookup fields, the app does not have knowledge on how to query supplier or category records from the database we'll need to define corresponding data models to allow us to build lookups. Let's add a model for suppliers. We can exclude columns from the data entity by unchecking the box. Let's go ahead and sort by company name. and save the model. Notice that when opening the products form, the supplier company name now shows an arrow to the right of the field value. We can select the arrow to open the related edit form for that lookup value. When we edit the record, it presents us a lookup control which allows us to find the exact supplier that we need based on the alias. We can also click on See All to select an item from the list or create a new one inline. We can see a similar problem with category lookup. Let's go ahead and add a category model now. We'll want to sort by category name. Let's go ahead and generate the app. Notice that a similar behavior is available for categories. Because all database entities are first-class objects, we have full capability out of the box to create, read, update, and delete records based on those entities. The Model Builder also gives us the ability to create calculated fields. These fields will present a read-only value calculated in SQL to the user in grids and forms. Let's click the plus SQL button, give a name for the field, 
and you can define your SQL formula in the text box below. You can also use drag and drop to include fields. We can see that our total stock field was added to the end of our field list. Let's drag to rearrange the field and place it after the units on order field. We can switch to the query tab to see the output. This query is generated by the model builder and is broken apart by the framework to intelligently construct CRUD queries as necessary. We can see that our formula is included under the total stock column. We can validate that our formula works by switching to the data tab. By default, the data tab will give us raw data from the query. We can disable the raw data feature and turn on labels to give a more accurate representation of what the user will see in the user interface. We can see that our formula appears to work correctly. We'll go ahead and save the model and regenerate the app. The total stock field is now visible in both the grid and the form. The formula field is read-only by default. The model builder allows us to create multiple variants of database entities with different columns and filters. Let's create a model for our North American customers. We'll add a filter onto this model to ensure that only records from USA or Canada are displayed to the user. Let's add a filter where the country is in USA or Canada. You can double check by visiting the Query tab. While this isn't exactly what the application will use when forming CRUD queries, it gives us an idea as to how the query will look. The data tab will validate that all the records only come from the countries Canada or USA. Everything looks good. Let's go ahead and generate the app. We can look at the available filter options under country to see which options are available. We can see only USA and Canada are present. If we create a new record, and specify the country as Canada, we'll be able to find the record. If we create another record that doesn't match the two countries, then we will not be able to view the record. Let's go ahead and create another database entity that will show us a list of all the customers in the database. We'll want to scroll down on the right list to Entities of the Model and select Customers. This will create a second model. We can rename the model by clicking in the name in the top right corner. We will not add a filter onto this model. Save and regenerate. Notice that we now have two customers pages, customers and all customers. All forms, views, and controls between these two pages are completely separate. And we can view customers that are not within the filter. Let's add a contacts table to our sample database that will allow us to bind multiple contacts to each supplier.
Let's create a context table. with several fields. Go ahead and save the table. Next, we'll need to refresh the cache database model to ensure that the new database entity is detected. Click on the project name, select Refresh. Make sure to check the box next to the database schema has changed recently and press Refresh. We'll now be able to create a model for our contacts database entity. We'll sort contacts by name, save the model, and regenerate. Our new contacts page is ready to go. We can go ahead and insert new contacts as necessary. Unfortunately, it looks like we forgot something. We need to link each contact to a supplier record via a foreign key. Let's jump back to the database and add the supplier ID foreign key field to the contacts table. And let's build the foreign key to suppliers. Make sure to save your changes. We'll need to refresh the database schema one more time. Let's jump to the contacts model. Notice that we have an unchecked field here. By default, we'll not automatically add fields that are created after the fact in the database. Let's add the field, right click, and select Connect to Suppliers. We'll want to pick up an alias field to use as the label for the lookup. Save and regenerate. When we create a new contact, we can now specify the supplier that this contact is linked to. The Model Builder supports using both database tables and database views. Let's create a data model for the database view alphabetical list of products. Notice that this view does not have any foreign key relationships defined in the database. Therefore, the model builder cannot automatically determine how to construct the lookups. We'll need to manually configure them. We'll go ahead and add the suppliers and categories tables. Drag the field intended to be a foreign key onto the primary key of the table. If the types match, a virtual foreign key will be created. We can now include fields from the lookup table. Let's do the same thing with categories. Let's go ahead and sort by product name. If we were to go ahead and generate the app at this time, 
we will be unable to perform any actions that require selecting records by a unique key, such as opening the edit form, editing, or deleting a record. This requires defining a virtual primary key for our controller. This primary key will be used as a key to select, update, or delete records. We'll use product ID as a primary key, so right-click and set it as the primary key. Notice that the spec now says VPK, or virtual primary key. Let's see how our controller, based on the database view, works. We should now be able to select individual records. This will open up the edit form. We can now edit the record. The database view will automatically write back to the products table.